Let's look at another ring system. This is called an isoxazole. It's very closely related to a pyrazole. This is the most simple isoxazole that we can draw. And if we think about this ring coming apart, so we can think about what are the starting materials we need to make this. There's an imine, the carbon-nitrogen double bond. So we can form that imine by reaction of, of this primary amine with that carbonyl compound. And this gets this piece over here a little more confusing. This is um, this is an enol or an enol ether. And it turns out these are also formed from carbonyl compounds. And we'll spend a little bit more time developing that when we do a synthesis in just a moment. So these would be our two starting materials that we bring together to form the ring. This molecule is um, called hydroxylamine. It's an amine with an OH on it, in contrast to hydrazine, which is an amine with another amine on it. And the other partner in this reaction is a 1,3-dicarbonyl compound, just as we saw with pyrazole. So these, these are pretty handy molecules to be able to make these 1,3-dicarbonyl compounds. They give you access to a lot of different um, heterocycles. So, so let's look at a specific reaction. Let's pick a specific 1,3-dione, which is dirt cheap. You can buy this uh, in big bottles from chemical companies. And we'll treat it with this hydroxylamine. Let's, uh, what would happen first in this reaction is the amine would react with the carbonyl to lose water to form an imine. We've seen that before. Make imine. And we lose water. And now this, this is a little trickier. So I said well, I wanted to expand on this, uh, what happens with this enol. So you can imagine this oxygen, it's in the same molecule as the carbonyl, and they're held in pretty close proximity to make a five-membered ring. So that oxygen at some point is going to attack. Now I'm going to skip a step. step. We, when you do a proton transfer, we have to take the OH off of, the hydrogen off that OH and put it on this, um, the oxygen, the carbonyl. So I'm not going to show both those steps but that's going to take us two more steps to accomplish that. One to remove the proton and one to put it back where we want it. So that gets us to here. As it turns out, we're very close to being done. We're going to need to lose water. So first off, we'll lose our OH, and there may be acid in here to help that. And technically, hydroxide is a leaving group, and uh, some base will come along and deprotonate next to this uh, oxonium ion. And that gives us, let's just go down here. That gives us our isoxazole. And this is an aromatic compound. We have two electrons in that pi bond, two electrons in that pi bond. We're, we're going to ignore that lone pair because that's, that's in an sp2 hybrid sticking off the ring. This oxygen has a lone pair that's sticking on the ring, but one of those lone pairs on oxygen is in the p orbital, and that gives us electrons 5 and 6 to satisfy Huckel's rule. So isoxazoles are also very easy to make. If you have access to 1,3-dicarbonyl compounds like we see on the, the bottom left, as well as hydroxylamine, uh, just throw these together, wait a little while, and you come back and often you'll have uh, nice crystalline products.